This is video two for the binomial theorem. And in today's video, instead of expanding the whole binomial to get a long polynomial, we're just going to look at individual terms. So here's our first example for today. We want to find the fifth term in the expansion of 2x plus y to the 10th power. Now we know that if we were to expand this, we would end up with something that would have 11 terms. Now I could sit here and I could figure out all 11 terms and I could write them all out and simplify them and then I could just simply find the fifth term in the list, term number five. But that'd be a little time consuming. So what we're looking for is to again leverage the patterns, look at the patterns, and see if there's a way that we can figure out this fifth term without having to go through the work of finding all 11 terms. And there is a way to do this. So here's the idea. So if we expand and we find the polynomial given by a plus b to the nth power, and we want the kth term. So again, we have a polynomial being raised, or a binomial being raised to a power. We end up with a long polynomial. We just want the kth term. We want a certain position in the list. We do have a formula for it. And again, like last time, it looks pretty intimidating, but let's break it down piece by piece. We know that we will have some power of b, some power of a, and we will have some combination that will tie it all together. Now you can write this down and try to make sense of it, but I think this is one of those things that's easier to do just by practicing some problems. So we'll come back to this formula again, but let's take a look at some sample problems. So again, 2x plus y to the 10th, we want the fifth term. So here is my fifth term. I'm just going to write one blank for it. I know in this term, 2x will be raised to some power. I know in this term that y will be raised to some power. I just really need to figure out what those powers will be. And then when I'm done, I will have some combination tying it all together. Let's see if we can figure out what these powers are. Let's actually start here with the power of y. Keep in mind what the powers of y do. The first term, y is raised to the zero power. And then it's raised to the first, and then to the second, and then to the third, and so on. And we see that by the time we get to the fifth term, we're actually at y to the fourth power. So this means that we will have, I'm going to backtrack a little bit here, we will have y to the fourth power right here. Well, similarly, what will happen right here for the power of 2x? Well, there's a couple ways to get this one. Keep in mind that the powers of 2x will start with 10 and will decrease. So 10, 9, 8, 8, whoops, 8, 7, 6. So by the time you get to the fifth term, we'll be at the sixth power. So this right here is the sixth power. Another way to think of this, and I'll use a different color here, another way to think about this, these two exponents always have to add up to the power in the problem. So once you establish that one of them is raised to the fourth power, you automatically know that the other one's being raised to the sixth power. So again, the patterns are coming into play here. The last thing we need is we need to know what combination we're looking for. Well, keep in mind that since this is a tenth power problem, that this will be the ten C row. These are the combinations that start with 10. And it's 10 C what? Well, keep in mind the patterns again. These usually start at 0 for the first term and go 1, 2, 3. They go sequentially. So that by the time you get to the fifth power, it will be 10 C4. Another way to think of it is whatever this number is, that will be the number that goes here, 10 C4. Okay. So we have some options here, and it's all about patterns. So we figured out all the pieces that we had on the last screen with the formula. We just now need to multiply it all together. We can figure out what 10C4 equals. We know that that equals 210. Right here, I have a couple things going on. I have 2 being raised to the 6th power. Now I'm going to figure out what 2 to the 6th power is my calculator. I'll let my calculator do the work. And then we have x to the 6th power, y to the 4th. So it's starting to come together nicely. I use my calculator to multiply these guys, and you can trust that this comes out as 13,440, x to the 6, y to the 4. And this is the fifth term in the list. Okay? Two more examples. We'll go a little bit more quickly through these two. x minus 4y to the 8th, I want the third term. All right, so here's my term, nice little blank. Two sets of parentheses, make sure you leave a lot of space. Every term will have some power of x. Every term will have some power of negative 4y, and here the parentheses are really big. Okay, It's the third term. Well, the third term, I always start with this ex exponent. The third term means this will be raised to the second power, because again, they start with 0 in the first term, and they go up, 0, 1, 2. This exponent, I can get a couple different ways. The easiest way to get it is to know your exponents have to add up to 8. So once I know this one is a 2, I have a 6 here. And then finally, my combination is 8, because we're talking about the 8th power, 
8C2. So we have it all pieced together. So at this point, let's think about what we need here. We have 8C2. We're going to figure out what 8C2 comes out as. I'll use my calculator to do that. I'll also have, let me switch colors here. You can see what's going on. Let's also look at some other numbers here. I have negative 4 squared. Well, I know that that's 16. I also have x to the 6th and y squared. Put this all in your calculator. And again, I'm using the commutative property here to move these things around. It's all multiplication, so I can move these guys around and multiply them together. If you multiply it all together, you will find out that this term comes out as 448x to the 6th y squared. So there it is. Okay, last example. 4x plus 3y to the 12th, find the 10th term. Here's my term, two sets of parentheses, 4x being raised to powers, 3y being raised to powers. Since it is the 10th term, I know that this will get to 9 on that term, because again, they start at 0. Once I know that's a 9, this is a 3, and I will have 12c9. All right, now this one's going to take a little bit more pain in our calculator. I'm actually going to start at the end. At the end, I will have x cubed y to the ninth. I know that. Just what is the coefficient going to be? Well, all the pieces that make up the coefficient, let's switch colors again, are 12c9, 4 to the third power, and 3 to the ninth power. So in my calculator, I'm going to put in 12c9, 4 to the third power, 3 to the ninth power, and I will let my calculator do all the work. And this one comes out rather, rather nasty. You can verify it. This comes out as, and I have to cheat and look at my little sheet here, 62,355,744 x squared. Uh, no, I gave the wrong term here, guys. Okay, let's pause. Okay, guys, so I just resumed the video after a pause, and here's what happened. When I do these problems, I do them beforehand, and I write down the answers, and I wrote down the wrong term when I cheated on my computer. So I got a backspace here, and this is what happens when you do videos. The actual answer to this one is, hopefully, this is 277 million. Really, really nasty answer. 136,640 x cubed y to the ninth. So all my other work is right. I just had the wrong thing written down. Pretty, pretty nasty. And it's not unusual that we'll get some nasty answers here. So this is all about finding terms, and I hope you found it helpful.